Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been hurt? Hurt by someone you love, hurt by a total stranger, hurt in a way that you just can't seem to figure out how to deal with. Emotional hurt's different than physical hurt. I grew up playing sports, so I was physically injured, hurt a lot, a lot, a lot. Plus, I'm a clumsy person. I get that naturally. And between those, I was physically injured a lot. I haven't said a word. <laughs> and most people think that physical injuries, especially like things like broken bones, take longer to heal than an emotional wound or and you've been hurt in a way that emotionally hurt you. And I would completely disagree. And as someone who's had a lot of injuries in their life, I think that it's so much easier for a broken bone to heal or a torn muscle to repair itself than it is for an emotional wound to heal. How do you deal with that? when somebody hurts you and you don't know what to do? Well, I have to respond, first of all, to what you've been saying. Oh, geez, just let it go. No, uh, well, I will let it go, but I have to say this. Uh, there was a time when the closet in Jordan's room was like a medical dispensary. There were ace bandages, there were crutches, there were canes, there were boot walkers, uh, there was uh, uh, there was those slip-on things on your knee. I, I, it got to the seen. point where I was saving you money by recycling <laughs> them because it was just happening a lot. You should be thankful for that. <laughs> She broke, twisted, turned, and sprained everything that could be broken, twisted, turned, and sprained oh, yeah. during her athletic career. I used to have such a pretty nose. <laughs> I miss that. It's been a long time since I saw the original one, <laughs> but it's okay. I broke my I nose once it. in a basketball game in high school, and I, I'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah. You're still nice and straight. Mine, Mine's not quite that good, well, but I, it's okay. I did take it and pull it back into position. It hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah, it sure hurt. Does. But I did it. it. And it is. It's so painful. Anybody's broken their nose. Oh, you broken know. broken a lot of bones, and my nose was one of the worst ones by far. And it did take a long time to heal. And boy, it hurt for a long time and even after the hurt was gone it was sensitive for a long time well that's the way it is when you get emotionally hurt too it hurts for a long time and then mm -hmm. it and then it lingers <laughs> it's it, it, i you know everybody may have a different opinion on this one but i feel like that is a far worse yeah. hurt than a little physical pain well because it can't be seen if you are a card carrying member of society you're going to get hurt things happen things that people do to you intentionally, things that people do that are not intentional and yet it's done to you, things you do to yourself. You're gonna get hurt. The question is, how do you handle the hurt? Do you allow it to just crush you and then allow it to fester inside of you and allow bitterness and resentment and anger and hatred to come out of you as a result of it? Or do you let it go? Do you give it to God and do you forgive the person that has done the deed to you, whether intentionally or unintentionally? That's really a good question. How, how do you forgive someone when you're still hurt, when you're still feeling the effects of that? Well, the best thing is to realize that Jesus said, if you don't forgive, then neither will I forgive you. <laughs> In other words, if I don't forgive what someone has done to me, then I'm not going to receive forgiveness myself. And I know there are times when I need forgiveness. I don't want forgiveness withheld from me, so therefore I'm not going to withhold it from someone else, whether they deserve it or not. People have done things to me, terrible things to me. They don't deserve to be forgiven, but I forgive them because the Bible says I am to forgive them if I want to be forgiven myself. How do you do that when you're still so upset, you when make, it's fresh? You make a decision. I tell people all the time, in life there's no such thing as indecision. You either decide or you decide not to decide. And I decide, I make a decision that I'm going to forgive. I'm going to walk in love. Whether they deserve it or not, whether they ever apologize and admit what they did was wrong. I can, I can name people right now. People, and some of the names I would, I would name are names that people would, would, be, would know because they're people in the public eye. People who have done things to me and I still remember what they did. But I have forgiven them, I have let them go, and I have given them to God because I can't carry it. It hurt too bad outside and inside of me. But I learned how to forgive them and let them go and leave them in the hands of God. That's the best way to do it. What do you do if it's a situation where it's someone you have to see consistently and you've forgiven them on a level saying, Lord, I turn them over to you, but at the same time, every time you see them, it's just like someone squeezing a lemon mm, yeah, in your yeah, yeah, I know. How, how do you do? What I know do you a do? person like that. I see them maybe six or eight times a year, and it's it's not easy, but I have done it. I made a decision to do it. I, I made a decision that I forgave this person, and every time I see this person, I remind myself that I have forgiven them. I let that go. Sounds simple, I know, but... Realistically, it's never quite that easy. Letting something go 
can be quite difficult. Some people probably have a harder time than well, others I, I to want, let things go. I want people to let things go that I have done too, you know. I have to turn that back on myself. I've done I've done things to people you know, unintentionally, but and yet I've hurt them. And and I, I want them to forgive me. What would happen in a situation where you realized you were wrong and you asked for forgiveness and they rejected it well, and said no? There's nothing I can do about that. Do you ask for it anyway, even if you know they're going to say no, and inevitably sure. they do? Uh, can, I tell you, can I tell you a golfing story? Sure. It's many years ago. I was playing golf. I'll never forget. I was in the fifth, fifth hole, and there was a husband and wife in the group in front of me. And I was waiting to hit my shot. And they both putted out, and they started walking to their cart to get in the cart. They walked off the green, which was a signal that I could go ahead and play. Right. So I hit my shot, and when I looked up at my shot, much to my amazement, the woman had come back on the green. Apparently, she'd left a club on the green, and she came back, and I, I started waving, and all of a sudden, wham, the ball landed right next to her on the green. Oops. That's where I was trying to hit it, but. Well, of course. <laughs> but and she was irate. I jumped in my golf cart. I, I went up there as fast as I could, yelling, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You left the green, I didn't see you come back on. She railed me, she chewed me out. She ate me up and spit me out and, and refused at my apologies. She said, she said, you did it on purpose. You tried to hit me. Well, I didn't try to hit her. It was an accident. She had walked off the green. And that's a signal you can go ahead and play. Right. But she came back on the green literally taking her life in her hands <laughs> and the ball hit right next to her. Thank God it didn't hit her. Yeah. But she refused to forgive me. And Jordan, for the next 10 years, that woman would not speak to me. I would say hello to her. She shook her head and walked on by. She would not accept my apology. Well, I did everything that I could do. I was sorry. I repented as much as I could possibly repent to her and told her I would never have done it if I realized she was coming back on the green, but she wouldn't accept it. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to is to apologize, and and uh, do my best so it never happens again, right. and then let it go. And if they don't accept it, there's not much else I can do. That may be a situation. She probably still doesn't like me. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably it seems as if she's going to hold on to that for a long time. But the thing is with that is that she's the one who will be suffering by holding on to all that resentment. But I won't and because I, I ask for forgiveness. You, you've done your part, you've apologized, and, and if you're in the reverse situation, if you are like that woman, not forgiving all those years, you're holding on to so much bitterness that will just tear you apart. There's, even if they don't deserve it, there's nothing good will come from holding on to unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. When you and your sisters were little, and you remember this, uh, your mom and I had all three of you girls in a restaurant in Tulsa, an Italian restaurant, and a man walked over to our table I didn't know why. It happens from time to time. People come over to the table to say hello or they want a prayer. And this man walked over with kind of a snarl on his face. And our children were eating. Uh, Chloe was just in a high chair. And your mom and I were there. And he looked at me and he said, you don't have any idea how much I hate you. Well, it shocked me. I'm sure. And uh, he turned and walked out of the restaurant. And the, the table next to me, you know, they what, what did he say? And the waitress came over and said, what did he say? And I. I told her, and the waitress said, well, I would have just hit him. <laughs> and I said, no, no. And we just sat there and prayed and forgave him, imagining what he must be going through to say something like that to me. What? I, I never laid eyes on him in my life. I never met him before. He never met me. I don't know what I possibly could have done that would have made him so angry. But, but whatever it was, I forgave him for that feeling that he had against me because I didn't want to walk out of that restaurant feeling that someone hated me. So I just forgave him and I let it go. And there are certain things that there's nothing you can do about. You do your part, you forgive them even when you don't want to, which frankly is often, in my life at least, half the time I really don't want to and they probably no. don't deserve it, but yeah. you have to do it. Well, Peter asked Jesus one day, uh, how many times must I forgive? Seven? As if to say, I've already forgiven this guy seven times. Isn't now that enough? It's, now it's the eighth time. Can I hit him? You know, can I do something? And Jesus said, no, Peter, 70 times seven. Or in other words, live a life of forgiveness. If you want to be forgiven, then learn how to forgive. How do you deal with a situation that someone else is in and they've come to you and they say, I just can't forgive them? How do you... How do you how do you try to help someone out well, of that horrible place of that Sometimes been? I will t talk to them like I'm talking now. And then I'll say, could I lead you in a prayer of forgiveness? And I'll take them by the hand 
and I'll say, just pray this prayer after me. And I, then I'll pray and have them pray out loud after me a prayer of forgiveness. And I hope and I pray that that prayer sticks. <laughs> That's good advice. If, if something you just can't seem to let go of, go to someone that you trust for prayer. You can always call the Abundant Life Prayer Group if there's no one that you know. Or, or if it's something that's sensitive and you don't want to talk about with family, call the Abundant Life Prayer Group and, and pray with someone and say, I need help forgiving. Can yeah. you pray with me to help me forgive? I want to forgive. I just can't let it go. I think one of the hardest things for people to forgive is when they've been abused. I think of women who have been sexually abused and how difficult it must be for them to let that go. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, holding on to it is almost worse than the abuse itself. You've just got to find a way to let it go. And I've had so many things done to me and so many things said about me that weren't true that just cut me to my heart. But I had to learn how to forgive those people. I had to, literally, I, I have to separate the person from what they did. What they did was wrong, but I have to forgive them. Mm -hmm. I'm not forgiving them for the wrong that they did. I'm forgiving them. It doesn't justify the action. It doesn't make That's the right. action It's okay. not saying what you did was okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. What they did was wrong. The hurt that they put on you, the hurt they put on me was wrong. There's no way before God what they did was right. But you got to learn how to separate that and forgive the person. Praying about it, having someone pray with you if it's something you just can't let go of. I know for me, sometimes I have to physically say things out loud, even if it's frustratingly sure. through gritted teeth rolling my eyes sometimes that's a start until you work your way into actually truly letting it go and forgiving them because it's hard it's not easy saying oh okay get over it let it go is easy when you're not the one yeah, in the position yeah. you, of trying you, you, to let go people say that and i've actually said that at times and it doesn't work but now let me help you maybe you've had a situation and maybe you're holding something or you're harboring unforgiveness against somebody right now because of what somebody has said or what they have done or what they've done to one of your family you know and, and Lindsay has had a hard time oftentimes forgiving people for what they've done to her husband you know wives stand up for their husbands and she stood up for me and, and and so many times it's been hard for her to forgive because of what somebody said and done to me as her husband but let me help you Maybe you've had something like this happen to you and you're holding and harboring unforgiveness right now. Why don't you let me do what I did and I've done for many times to, pe to people, to lead them and to lead you in a prayer of forgiveness. Now just think for a moment of that person or those people, whoever they are. I'm sure they're right now in the forefront of your mind, who they are and what they did. Maybe you're just, you're just chewing nails right now as you think about their name and what they've done. Believe me, I understand, I've done that too. But let me lead you in the kind of prayer that I pray when someone has hurt me deeply, all right? Pray this prayer out loud after me. Oh God, you know that I've been hurt by this person, by this group of people, by what they've done. And as hard as it is, right now, I forgive them. I let them go. I do not hold it to their account any longer. I release them and let them go. I forgive them and I give them to you. Now, why do I lead the prayer that way? Because I know that you want to be forgiven. And Jesus said, if you don't forgive, then neither will I forgive you. I want Jesus' forgiveness in my life, so therefore I'm going to forgive every opportunity I have a chance to. And I pray that that helps you and it's a blessing. Now, from time to time, uh, th that person's name or you may run across that person and all of a sudden those old feelings come up. I had a situation the other day where a person's name came up, a person who had done something despicable to me and I had a chance to, to take that back. But I said, no, Lord, I remind you, I have forgiven them. I let them go. I'm not going to take that old grudge again. I'm not going to take that old feeling again. And that feeling went away. It's not easy. We understand. Sometimes it's hard. And sometimes they don't deserve your forgiveness. But for your own sake, yeah. let it go. You have to. You have to let it go. Sometimes I actually say out loud, let it go, let it go, let it go, Jordan, let it go. Because that helps me to, mm -hmm. okay, say it over again. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go until mm -hmm. I actually let it go. That's right. And you have to. So the advice for today. It's short, it's sweet, it's simple. Let it go. Sometimes I just string the words together in one giant word, let it go. Just say it if you have to, one word, let it go. Time to go, let it go. Thanks for tuning in today. 
Remember, let it go. Oh, it's subscribe. not worth it. Subscribe to our YouTube Oh, yeah. Channel. Okay, so what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means subscribe. Uh, no, no. <laughs> what what action do you take when you subscribe? You, you have access <laughs> to what all was that? our videos. Okay, how do you do that? Huh? How do you subscribe? Well, I, I turn it over to you and say, yeah, here's right, exactly. <laughs> There's a little bell button right on the side of the video that you push to subscribe. See? And that will notify you when we put up new videos. That's because what I said. often. Sometimes I like to uh, challenge he tells me to tell them things, but I know he doesn't know what he's talking about. So it's, it's interesting to put him on the spot for those things. He's been he's been having trouble with his iPad over something that we just went over and he calls me. You didn't teach me that. We literally spent an hour going over how to download the movies on your iPad. How are we back to this yes, again? Do you forgive me? <laughs> you know what? Let it go. I 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 let it go. Let it go. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. When Richard receives your prayer request, he will pray over your needs, believing for the miracle that you need, and write you back. And when you give us your email address, you will receive a letter by email with a link to a video prayer specifically targeted to your needs. And I pray over your daughter right now for the Spirit of God to reign supreme in her life. Call for prayer today, 918-495-7777, or go online at oralroberts.com prayer. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications.